So forgive me for not looking my best, but it's not bad for post-art transplant, right? <laughs> hair is like, seems like my hair just like grew exponentially while I was in here. But we are, it's Monday. I had the transplant on Wednesday, Tuesday. It was at like three in the morning on Tuesday. I don't remember. It was either Tuesday or Wednesday or Monday. I don't remember, but it was it was close to about a week ago. But uh, this is the room that I'm in right now. Uh, using my iPhone to film, so sorry for the lack of quality, and sorry if it got really close to my voice. But in the room I'm in, on the ninth floor, wonderful view. It's very similar to the one that I had during my four month stay while I was waiting my heart transplant over a year ago. But um, totally different story now, you guys, because I've gotten the new heart and, you know, the first thing that people ask you is, do you feel different? And I guess mentally I feel different. I guess I haven't really put my heart through any test right now. I don't think it's really a smart thing to do, but as for now, I'm just really happy. Like, uh, it, we... This is something that we've been waiting for for over a year, and some people wait longer, some people don't wait as long as I do, and the fact that you have to wait, even if it's for like a week, it's you're constantly wondering when it's going to happen, but we'll get into that later. I just want to show you guys what, you know, the life of a post-op heart transplant patient is like. So we got my room here, awesome lounge chair, got my computer and everything over here. This device right here is supposed to help exercise your lungs, open up your lungs a little bit more. So you breathe into this. I'll show you how it works. So some people have already seen something like this before if you've been in a hospital after undergoing major surgery where you have to be put on a ventilator for breathing support. So what you do is you inhale and your goal is just to get this as high as you can, as slow as you can while keeping the indicator in between these two uh, arrows here. So when I put it in my mouth like this and I inhale, And that's actually really good since last night. So you do that to open up your lungs a little bit more, um, gets everything opened up in your chest cavity a little bit more, and you combine that with ambulating or walking. It's just a fancy word for walking, but they call it ambulating here in the hospital and hospital language. But um, so that's one of the things that I'm doing. Uh, as for my actual surgery, uh, the incision is coming along just nicely. I mean. They got rid of the scar tissue, but it's probably going to come back again. And, you know, once it heals up completely, we'll probably have to have it recessed because even with the scar, it's kind of, you get kind of irritation and itchiness. So you kind of have to have it recessed. Um, the defibrillator, you guys, guys, all the equipment that I had is gone. It's all been cut out and it's gone. And, you know, it's kind of sad to think about it at the moment because it's, it was with me for a year and it was what was keeping me alive. But... I can't, you know, you, I just can't live like that forever, but here's what everything looks like under here. It gets a little bit more complicated here. There's a big dressing site here because we had uh, chest tubes in here to drain fluid for after the surgery. Your cavity is full of fluid, so I'd have to have these three, uh, like, plastic pipes coming out of you that are flexible and everything, but they are the most uncomfortable things in the world, you guys, and getting them removed. Ah. Uh, they're in there, you guys, and they really pull them out. They they don't really sedate you for it, and they you're awake. So when they pull them out, it's... If anyone's familiar with the chest tubes and how that all works, you can kind of understand that it's not the most pleasant experience having them and getting them pulled out. But once you get them out, things just only get better. But back down to this mess down here, all these cords you see here are just um, connected to this box right here, which is my heart monitor and that's just wirelessly transmitting my basic heart rhythms there's nothing really that I'm hooked up to and then you'll see these two blue things here now these are pretty cool I didn't know that I was gonna have these but what these are is you know in case anything has to happen with my heart these are currently uh, insulated like jumper cables like if you've ever seen how they've jump started a car they put the cables on one engine of the battery in a car connect it to another car and they're able to jump start that car because the battery is dead this is essentially the same thing it's if anything were to happen they can hook up a defibrillator what 
the device used to be up here, up to here, this connects to my heart through some really fine filament wiring, and they're able to pace my heart if need be. But so far, you guys, nothing's really shown any signs of um, major rejection. Uh, we're not going to know until I get my first biopsy, which is tomorrow, which I'm actually slightly nervous for. You know, I just had my chest cut open and whatnot, and it's uh, something as small as this that's, like, massively less invasive. It's, like, bugging me out right now, but it's because it's a test to kind of see where I feel like this kind of would set the pace. But, you know, they expect, you have to expect there to be some sort of rejection, which is fine. Uh, but, you know, I I do see myself as a strong individual, individual and uh, things have been going very smoothly, and <clears throat> my voice is just now starting to stop cracking uh, after being intubated uh, having a breathing tube down my throat my voice was really weak really shaky <coughs> and um, coughing coughing is important uh, this heart-shaped pillow that I get after my surgery or I don't know what's a better view yeah that's a better view you use this to just hold on to and hold close to your chest so when you need to cough or clear your throat you can apply some pressure uh, that's not really fighting against everything in your chest cavity so it hurts a lot less. And speaking of hurting, um, pain medications, pain meds are cool. <laughs> I can see why people get addicted to them. I don't see myself getting addicted to them but you can I can see why. Uh, when I first woke up from my surgery I, I did feel really good. And I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to lie and say that it wasn't the pain meds talking because it kind of was. I mean, fentanyl is a hell of a drug. And when you go through that much surgery, you need a lot of fentanyl. And that fentanyl makes you feel good. Like, it's not only gets rid of the pain, but it, it's like euphoric. It's, you feel really good. I was given thumbs up, and like, this is me waking up, like, for the first time ever. I have, I have barely any recollection of what I said, so if I said anything to anyone that may have offended you in some way, I'm sorry. Blame it on the sedatives. But uh, um, I kind of want to take you guys out to the lounge. I have to be careful because this is a um, private, kind of a strict environment when it comes to that stuff because there are other patients and we have to respect their privacy. So as long as there's not like a group of people in the room, which I doubt there will be, but it's morning time and it looks really nice out. Sun's coming up, looks like it's going to be a really nice day. Couldn't ask for anything better. So, um, yeah, I have to be careful with privacy because uh, um, I'm currently listed. And by the way, when you guys are watching this, everything's going to have already been revealed, so there's really nothing that I'm risking right now. Um, um, I, we chose to, uh, you know, keep everything kind of under wraps and, uh, you know, kind of restrict the uh, amount of visitors. Not because I think that someone's going to come and try to do something weird, it's just... Uh, after a transplant of any sort, your body has to accept the organ, and when you have to accept the organ, you have to basically turn your immune system off. So uh, I have to remain in a very sterile environment. I'm not like a bubble boy or anything. I'm in a basic room, but I have to remain. I have to maintain a very sterile environment. My visitors have to maintain the same uh, expectations that you know the doctor set for anyone who comes into the room. That means cleaning your hands not really touching my stuff, which I don't want people doing anyway. And, um, yeah, these the medication that they have me on that controls my uh, immune system is very, very powerful. So, essentially, my immune system is turned off. I'm very susceptible to diseases, viruses, and even cancers. And, um, I mean, really, I don't think anything's really happened so far. I think my body's pretty, um, is handling it very well. But, uh, yeah. But, you know, you guys... Let's, um, I'm gonna tie up my awesome robe. You see this thing? Sweet. Tie up this awesome robe. I mean, check it out, really. Really. Out of all the weird things that they have, they have seersucker robes. Come on, swag. We're gonna go out to the lounge. <clears throat> There's that voice crack again. We're gonna go out to the lounge. I'm gonna show you guys a view. See how we do it up, living it up. Bliss 9E, step down. Cardiac unit. So this is the lounge area, you guys. It's where people get to hang out. But you guys, take a look at this view. Look at that. 
that's like five star quality like views you guys these are this is goals right here well not necessarily because i'm here for you know reasons that kind of suck but i mean just especially in the morning and the sun is just in my face and it's just so warm and it just makes you feel happy you know Just gotta soak it in. All right, so let's go check out another view. We can get go to another one of my secret spots. Well, it's not that much of a secret, but um, it's a spot that people don't really hang out at. So yeah, let's, let's just go. And here is the second view, you guys. So we were kind of around the corner, around the corner here and on the other side, but a better view of Hartford. And it just looks phenomenal. <sighs> Again, such a beautiful day. You can see the convention center down there. I don't know if you can see the... Oh, you can see the Capitol building. thing with the gold top or Capitol. And we here, we out here at Hartford Hospital. Hartford Hospital. Saving lives, kissing babies. No specific order. So before entering the rooms... Always sanitize. At every hospital you go to, guys, always use a sanitizer when leaving and coming back. All right, so we got the front-facing camera. My voice is different, you guys, because I'm just putting my surgical mask on. I, if I leave my room, if I'm, if when I leave the hospital, I have to wear this thing everywhere I go. Um, you know, maybe at home, but everywhere I go, if I'm not at home, I have to be wearing some sort of surgical mask to protect me from pollutants and airborne illnesses. But this is the view. Again, a very, I'm so blessed to have this view. It's so amazing. But let's go out to the lounge. Um, here's my bed. That's why I was just talking to you guys. I don't need to make up my bed, guys. We're living it up in here. It's the bathroom. And, all right, let's go to the lounge. Okay, so uh, I guess I can remove this since I'm back in my room. So yeah, that was a little tour of the unit and uh, I guess one thing the last thing we can talk about is receiving the phone call like knowing that I was gonna get my heart transplant after waiting for a year May of 2015 was when I was put on the list uh, so I had gotten home and it's already a long day and I'm maybe an hour out from my workout with my trainer and I just plop on my bed and just kind of relax, you know, get it, you know, save as much energy as possible for my workout. I only have like 20, 30 minutes to do this. So I'm just kind of chilling on my bed. Phone rings, and I know it's Hartford Hospital because I just recognize the order of the numbers. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, you guys, after a year of receiving phone calls to confirm appointments, to update you on your blood work and whatnot, you just fall into this funk where you think that all that's all you're going to receive for the rest of your life phone calls just confirming hey confirm your appointment for Wednesday or your blood work is this so keep doing this or make these changes or you know somebody you need to go see this specialist and that was basically what I had thought I was sitting in my bed didn't even open my eyes I just grabbed my phone slid my phone office hello hey Andrew how are you doing I'm, like, I'm doing all right uh, just relaxing before my workout and it's like how are you feeling and I was like feel fine you know feeling on top of the world I remember them asking that, asking me that specifically. Was I feeling on top of the world? Eh, it was just a normal day. Well, how would you feel if I told you we might have a heart for you? And then even there, I didn't even like, I was, I didn't shoot up. I was just like, okay, uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll call my mom now. And so, but then it slowly began to creep up on me that like, holy shit, like this is. What we've been waiting for and excuse my language but you know kind of getting a heart transplant but uh i my voice started getting like shaky wobbly not like i was gonna cry but like just like what do i do <laughs> like where do i go like what do i tell um obviously i called my mom that's the first thing i did and i and then the next thing i did was i i actually went to the gym i i couldn't sit at home for another second longer i didn't even change I went to the gym and I did my workout with my trainer because I, I was going to go stir crazy because they called me and they said, well, you know, we're, this is initial. This isn't 
a hundred percent guarantee, but it's looking, things are looking good. And we want you to know that this is what's happening. Okay. Sorry. So I had to cut the video because they had to come and get my blood sugar because of all the insulin and stuff that I'm on. They have to constantly monitor my blood sugar, but I was saying that, uh, so yeah, that's what they have to let you, Nate, you know, the letting you know what, you know, what the plan is for now. And so I'm at the gym and I didn't really tell that many people. I was just like, I just want to come and work out, you know, just get my mind off some things. And I told my trainer, cause I was like, so listen, um, we're going to probably have to cancel our next appointment. And then like the next like 15 after that, cause I'm just going to probably get a transplant. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The whole thought of it, everything that happened that day was spectacular. And it's, uh, I, uh, I, um, even after my workout, I still didn't get any confirmation, no phone calls or anything to say that, you know, we're going through with the transplant or we need you to do this or that. So I got through my workout. I didn't even drink a protein shake, you guys. I didn't even get in my gains, but I was, I, I called my friend up. I called my friend Derek and I said, Derek, what are you doing now? Can we hang out for a little bit? He's like, yeah, I'm about to go get some food. You can just come with me to get food. And I was just like, all right, cool. We're going to do that. And I didn't tell him what was going on at the time. I drove up to his house and I mean, I'm trying to hold back the biggest smile, you guys. So I try to act like nothing's really going on. He comes out, he said, what's going, what's up? And the first thing I said was just hospital called. He gave me the biggest hug I've ever gotten from him. Like I, you know, I was at one, some, at one point I was like, get off, but no, not really. But he was, he was ecstatic to know. And he, he was so excited. He ran up and got his mom, brought his mom down who just like got out of the shower or something like that. And I said the same thing to her. I said, um, yeah, hospital called and she immediately threw her arms around me and it was really awesome. And, you know, I called my mom and I could, you know, I didn't hear it in her voice, but I could sense that she was like trying to stay calm. She was at the grocery store. So you know she's trying not to make a scene because you know mom mom gets worked up. You don't want you don't want to be around when that happens. But I know she was like I know she was probably stood up real real high up on whatever seat she she said. I'm at the grocery store. Okay, we're gonna be on the next flight. I'm like mom, don't make any moves yet. You know it's not even confirmed yet. We already on the plane. I'm like what? You just you're at the grocery store. Like anyway, luckily. It wasn't a waste of travel, but um, uh, on our way to get pizza, surgeon calls me and says, yeah, we want you in surgery by tonight. And that was it. That was the confirmation. You know, that was, that was uh, basically them saying, you're, you're definitely getting the heart transplant. This is the, we couldn't ask for a better heart and we can't wait to see you. So we went and got pizza and well, I didn't get pizza. I had to watch him eat pizza. I couldn't, I had to fast for this, you guys. Any invasive surgery, you're going to end up fasting nine times out of ten. So I, the last junk food I witnessed consumed was by my friend, which was pizza. I'm not able to eat any junk food now, which kind of stinks. But why am I complaining, right? Anyway, you guys, the whole process of getting the phone call, going to the hospital, knowing exactly what I'm going for, it's, uh, it's very surreal, not in a way that, you know, this is what we've been wanting for so long, and it is, but I didn't see myself really bouncing off the walls. I didn't, I wasn't screaming for joy. I mean, you know, there was a little bit of celebration, but it was more back and forth between, you know, why this is happening. Why am I getting my heart transplanted? It's not because they went and picked it off a tree and said, oh, this one will do. It's because someone decided that I get to have a transplant. Someone who doesn't even know me, who will never see me, or who has never seen me, we don't know. And I probably won't know for a while. But it's because they decided to become an organ donor. And this is just one of those, one of those times where people need to understand that, you know, <laughs> someone who I've never met said, yes, he can live. He, they can live. You can, you, they don't even know if I'm a, a girl or a guy. But they said yes to me living my life.